Yes. job side uh-huh. but i wanted to pursue uh, civil services uh-huh. and uh, i was not able to manage the preparation with the workload which was uh-huh. there so that is why i left. but what is the uh, utility of a mechanical engineer in a company auditing firm that's what is it from like girls and young Sir, uh, I was with the performance improvement division, and towards the end of my mechanical engineering, I took uh-huh. courses which were in between engineering and management. Uh-huh. So, uh, the main thing that they wanted uh, from me at the management consultant role uh-huh. was uh, my quick ability to learn uh, in a particular new industry uh-huh. and able to analyze the data uh, which was there in the industry. Uh, and to come up with the solution and do the pilot for that. Yeah. And you had a good packet. So you got it in seventeen and focus solely on. Sales. Yes. And the very first attempt you were able to yes. come up to this level. That yes. Is really, very difficult table. Yes. You must compliment me. So tell me, uh, Siraj, uh, which newspaper did you read? So I read Indian Express and Times of India. So not Hindu. Uh, so not to so find that the, uh, the majority of civil service aspirants. Going for the Hindu or the Indian Express. Uh, so there is a perception uh, among the people that uh, majority of questions and the issues covered are from those newspapers, and it also gives a balance uh, in terms of the kind of articles which appear in those newspapers. Anthropology. Do you know any idea how many uh, tribes are there in India? So there are more than seven hundred tribes in India. Was some census conducted? Uh, sir, in census two thousand eleven, uh, tribes were counted, and there were more than seven twenty. Seven twenty. Yes. So how is because there are generally these tribal people are uh, they do not. Uh, Meet strangers normally. Okay. That is perhaps in their nature. Mm-hmm. So how do people manage to collect the data? Sir, uh, not all tribes are same. Uh, sir, we cannot uh, classify tribes as a monolith. Mm-hmm. Different tribes are in level of different cultural contact with the society. Mm-hmm. So there is a, a concept called tribe caste continuum, which says that there is a continuity between different tribes and different tribes are in different uh, uh, amount of cultural contact with the mainstream so many tribes are easy to approach and there are some tribes which are difficult to approach but uh, le- let's say the north, the, north uh, the sentinelese tribe which were there in demand so the census conducted by them was through uh, the aeroplane yeah. Through the through the aeroplane, so aeroplane. they they tried to do the sighting uh, from that and get an estimate. Like drones, eh? drones. And so how do they they count it uh, through a binoculars or? See, they took uh, those measures which was necessary. I am not aware of the exact nitty gritties of the operations, but it was done through air. 
Have you ever met any tribal society? Uh, not per se tribal society, but I have been friends with uh, people from uh, tri tribal communities uh, who are there in my preparation uh, phase in uh, quota as like, well as like Minas. Minas are but there. They are there. I don't call them tribes, but they, they are uh, scheduled tribes. Uh, they are scheduled tribes, but I don't consider them as tribes because. So yeah, they are very much in cultural contact with the rest of Indians. Census is a, but the number of uh, tribes which you give me, 720, and what is the total population of the tribal society in India? In India, they uh, constitute around 8% of the total population. 8%. Do they uh, participate in the elections? No. I so don't they, they do. They do. Yes. But why is it that they are anti-development? Sir, I would not say they are anti-development. Uh, they want to reap benefits uh, out of whatever development is happening in their region uh -huh. and it should not adversely affect uh, their way of life. So uh -huh. that is why they are against uh, any particular project if their sacred grooves are getting hampered or they are being evicted from the forest in which they live. So they are not per se against development but uh, th that is why we are trying to get an integrationist approach so that we have their point of view as well. Uh, so that we can have a holistic development. Okay. What is your view uh, about uh, capital punishment? Should it be banned altogether? So, capital punishment is considered a, a good deterrent uh, in in general terms. But uh, as we have seen uh, in the Western countries and Supreme Court has also used this very sparingly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are towards a regime in which uh, we will able to ban it completely. And I think uh, that uh, should be the way. And uh, what is your view about uh, committing suicide? So committing suicide. It is illegal. Yes, sir. But there is a tradition in Jain community to which you belong mm -hmm. called Santhara. I don't know. The people, uh, is it uh, common at the tag end of their age? Or even anybody can commit Santhara? Sir, uh, n not exactly anybody can commit Santhara. So, suicide and Santhara are very different uh, from each other. Santhara is basically a practice in which we are detaching from the body after a lot of exercise of being uh, doing detachment from the rest of the world like our family so it's an exercise of our soul so basically in Santhara uh, it is a 12 year long exercise if you uh, expect it to be done carefully so it's a planned exercise eh? it's, a, it's a planned not per se like when a person is reaching his fag end of his life, he will try to detach himself from uh, his family members, from the worldly desires, from material things. And when he is satisfied that he has uh, overcome all those uh, karmas, it is called Mohaniya karma, which attaches us to the rest of the world. So he at the end of it, when he has achieved all that, then he tries to leave his body and detaches himself from his body. So the Supreme Court has no objection. Has it legalized? Some Sir, uh, Supreme Court, it is under sub and, and it has stayed in court. Uh, yes. Yes. See, if it is done in a wrong manner, then it, it should be uh, uh, punished. Sir. Wrong manner means? As in if anybody is doing it without uh, proper supervision from the uh, Guruji's and from his family members uh, then or is if somebody is forcing somebody to do Santhara then it should be penalized. Is it necessary for the family members of the person subject mm -hmm. to give their okay? Yes, we have no objection. Say so it is a societal practice so the society will have to uh, approve then only the person will be able to go ahead with the Santhara. If it does it approve society? Then the person uh, will have to convince and then only uh, will be able to do it.
I read about uh, two siblings, brother and sisters, mm -hmm. young age, I think they must be 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And uh, they decided to turn into monks. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you support this practice? Sir, uh, turning into monks at a very young age uh, might not be good for the person because he has to see a lot of things before he is detaching from the world. So, rather than uh, giving Diksha, uh, the practice uh, of getting monkhood, uh, at a young age, we can uh, have a, a kind of practice in which a person should uh, be allowed till, let's say, the age of 18 to remain in a Vairagya position which is that he is trying to denounce the world but still in the world. So then only when uh, the monks and everybody else around him is sure that he has attained enough maturity to be able to leave, then he can. But they were allowed and it came in the paper, mm -hmm. I think uh, two or three months back. You must have read about it. No, you are no, from Rajasthan no. only. Okay. You are also from Rajasthan, they are also from Rajasthan or Madhya Pradesh. <laughs> Okay, uh, there is a very good concept in Jainism called Aparigraha. Yes, sir. Which is very, very my favorite uh, subject. Yes. If we, if the whole country follow this concept, what will be the result? So, if uh, the whole country will follow this, then uh, I think a lot of positive things will happen that we will be able to have good environment, uh, we will be able to uh, live uh, away from the pollution uh, which is uh, concerning us today and at the same time uh, such a practice will ensure that vices like greed and uh, non, uh, uh, like violence are not uh, easily uh, there in the society. Yes, a non-possessiveness. Not possessive. Yes, sir. But how will uh, it affect the ecology of uh, the country? Sir, uh, today uh, we are uh, in a practice in which we want more and more things for us. You will, you will get rid of the capital, extra capital, extra money, extra food. Give it to the poor as well as. Yes, so, sir. Will it solve the food security problem of the country? So it will help in that. It will help in the food security problem as well. And at the same time, the excess of everything, mm -hmm. the plastics, the uh, metal use, the extraction, all of that will reduce. And that in a way will help us okay, in the ecology. Last question. Uh, what happened yesterday, you are all aware. The relationship between India and Pakistan is going from bad to worse. So, how do you see, how do you perceive the future? of the relationship between two countries. Will it escalate into war or? Uh, sir, I don't see it escalating into a war because uh, what uh, we did was a uh, specific exercise to eliminate the terrorist. It was not an aggression against the country. So that is why uh, the international uh, people are also supporting it through that lens. It is not an act of aggression or a first strike in a war. So I don't see it escalating further. Can we not call it a retaliation to avenge uh, the killing of? Sir, it is not a, uh, a retaliation to avenge. We are trying to protect ourselves and trying to uh, ensure that such attacks do not happen in the future. But will, uh, you know, China has not stated its position so far. Mm -hmm. It has kept on. It has already made a statement that both the countries should uh, exercise the strain of their action. That is the only thing they have said. Yes, sir. But their heart lies with Pakistan. Don't you think that uh, sooner or later Pakistan or China also will be joining it? Sir, uh, the um, exercise that we did uh, yesterday has uh, no implication per se because China also wants to eliminate terrorists. So uh, it is a positive exercise for the whole of world, I would say, and 
no particular retaliation if uh, Pakistan does it will be in bad light for uh, in terms of uh, the international diplomatic uh, action that they have one last question uh, Jainism believes in rebirth uh, yes sir and uh, reincarnation uh, so I'm not sure about reincarnation. But does it believe in the immortality of soul? Yes, sir. It does. Supposing God makes the humanity as immortal, never to die, what will be the impact? So, uh, as per Jainism, uh, there is no creator or destroyer per se. So, uh, the world is the way it is and uh, in a hypothetical scenario, if we were to say that uh, humans are immortal, then uh, there would be uh, a lot of different ways in, will we, in which we will perceive the world. There is a lot of uncertainty now that the next moment can be death, but that will not be there. And that will make life maybe a little bit boring. So you will stop working. You will not like to attack uh, nuclear attack on India. Because there, there will be no... Uh, that could be a scenario. Because people will not be uh, worried that uh, the next moment uh, might be the end. And I have to uh, gather as much as possible. But at the same time, if population kept on rising, then again it will... Uh, to cause a concern because pe resources will be limited. But if there is a rebirth, anyway, it's okay. Thank you. Okay, so yes. You work with Boston Analytics as well as Ernest and Young. Yes. You are two top consulting firms, I think. Sir, Boston Analytics is a startup from US. Analytics, but I think it's an offshoot of BCG. No, sir. So it's no, a different it's not related to Okay. So what analytics you are doing there? Sir, I was part of the strategy practice in Boston Analytics, mm -hmm. uh, in which we were trying to help a IT firm to do market entry in uh, new areas like data analytics and uh, customer commerce. Okay, and this the other one, Ernst Young. Sir, Ernst Young, I was a performance improvement consultant. So uh, the role was to assist clients in order to solve their problems. So we used to go to the client's place, uh, try to get an idea what their pain points are through uh, data analytics, through uh, interviews, and then come up with solutions as per the best practices of the industry with the uh, input from the clients, and try to do pilot and hand holding so that their performance improves. Have you done something in data analytics? Uh, in data analytics, uh, the idea was uh, regarding mostly using Excel, and SQL uh, in order to help. I mean, believe data analytics is something broader than this Excel and uh, using uh, SQL. So it is basically to get an idea what uh, the things are going on through uh, uh, slicing and dicing of data and uh, get, an, get insights out of it that where should we go next, where, what are the issues that we are facing. There is a saying normally that uh, the consultants will say who they come mm -hmm. after lots of analysis they tell you something which you already know is it true to some extent sir uh, if uh, the client would uh, be able to uh, get an overall perspective of what is going on then he will be able to uh, maybe guess what is going on but uh, through data analytics we have a backing of the data so that will substantiate whatever the uh, like the hunch or the kind of perception that one is having while driving a particular operation. Having done so much good work in this field, mm -hmm. did it ever come to you that you should go into big data, SaaS technologies? Uh, sir, uh, that is an option, but uh, I felt that civil services is something uh, which. Uh, what attracted me uh, so that is why I left that particular thing but I think uh, even in civil services there will be enough chances where I can implement uh, big data solutions 
uh, to uh, improve administration. But you did not study big data. So that can be done uh, uh, while uh, taking a break from administration and Tell us something about your place, this Kishangarh and Ajmer. Sir, Kishangarh is a town uh, near Ajmer. Uh, it is famous for uh, its marble industry and called as the Marble City of India. It is also famous for uh, the Bani Thani uh, painting, uh, which is there. And uh, recently, the airport for Ajmer has come up in Kishangarh. So, uh, and about Ajmer, Ajmer is the heart of Rajasthan, sir. And uh, it is famous for its religious tourism. Uh, the Khwaja Mohinuddin Chishti's Darga is there in Ajmer, and uh, the Brahma Temple, uh, the alone one, is in Pushkar. So it is a hub for uh, religious tourism. Okay. Now, supposing you are made trip for Ajmer. Yes, sir. What will you do to improve the condition of that place? So the Darga of Khwaja Mohinuddin because I find, I saw it, I would say 30 years ago, I saw it after 20 years, mm -hmm. it's all the same, no change. So people, whatever problems they had at that time, they have that problem still. Mm -hmm. So what change do you think you can bring about being a local elite? Sir, uh, Darga, uh, the area around Darga is very crowded and many of problems uh, arise because of that. So what can be done is proper sanitation and hygiene related uh, things can be done in that area. At the same time clear marking and pavements uh, can be made so that tourists do not uh, have any uh, issues uh, while uh, visiting Darga. And we can take help from the Darga administration as well to ensure that the process of a tourist entering and leaving that particular area is streamlined. Have you been to Darga? Sir, I have been to Darga, uh, but I didn't go inside uh, because there was a uh, uh, crowd, it was crowd at that time. So, I chose to uh, go some other place. The situation there is that you get in and you won't come out without your mobile and wallet having been. Stolen. Yes, sir. So, you are not aware of this that this is something which has to be done? Yes, sir. So, this is one of the. Uh, so, to, to decrowd that place, if that place is decrowded, then all these things will not happen. Because of the crowd, uh, some miscreants uh, take advantage of the situation and try to do such mischief, sir. Okay. Now, in India, we have a big problem. Inequality, can you tell me something about it and what can be the solution in coming forward? So, uh, India has uh, in, uh, inequality, we can substantiate it through different surveys that we are having, and at the same time, we can see that there are uh, at one place a uh, lot of good institutions, and at the same time, there are people who are not able to. Uh, get their meals, uh, square meals per day. So that kind of disparity is there. Uh, about the solutions uh, to this particular problem, sir, uh, schemes like Manarega which is there, which ensures that people are getting uh, food, uh, so social security schemes uh, like UBI can also be uh, explored in a further way to ensure that in income inequality reduces. Now, UBI is a concept uh, in which everybody gets that money. Yes, sir. So, is it fair? Sir, uh, they, we can go for conditional UPI uh, in which a particular segment of the population which uh, are facing problem can uh, get those benefits. When the moment you say make it targeted, mm -hmm. uh, lots of inclusions, exclusions, Yes, sir. Again, giving rise to corruption. Sir, uh, direct benefit transfer, uh, if uh, done through enough data protection, uh, the inclusion exclusion error uh, can be uh, removed in the longer term. Sir, people who are responsible for included actually they are corrupt. Mm -hmm. You have to first pay them something to get yourself included in the list. Sir, uh, if uh, the cutting edge 
person are ensured that uh, they do not have much discretion in their hand then uh, this particular problem can be solved okay consider this indian society yes sir the american society and then say some, something like afghanistan yes which of these three is the most unequal and which of these three is the most equal so if we were to say uh, unequal uh, then it would be uh, united states of america because there are many more billionaires there and uh, when you compare the spectrum uh, inequality is higher there hmm. and uh, if you would to say equality then afghanistan uh, would be more equal because there are very few people who are on the uh, uh, rich spectrum right so inequality is something which does not portray as bad but unequal it doesn't mean much Uh, so uh, USA appears to be more unequal than us. Yes. Sir. So then, where lies the real problem? So the real problem lies in poverty, sir. Mm-hmm. Rather than uh, uh, inequality, we should target poverty. So why this Oxfam and other reports they keep on harping on this subject? Sir, uh, inequality uh, is also a factor of deprived, uh, uh, like perceived deprivation. so sir that is also an issue which uh, uh, hinders people through an psychological way so that perceived deprivation if also is gone then it will also help people to be more uh, productive in their work uh friends <clears throat> what is the board of u upsc c And you go for a percentage interview, which you're going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. What does the board see? So, as per my understanding uh, of the process, uh, the board will look at uh, the ability of a person to be able to convey himself in a fluent manner, to express himself. The person is honest with integrity, and at the same time, the person is uh, curious to learn about new things. and uh, uh, ensures that he has empathy and compassion towards people okay so valid uh, what you say but uh, that is uh, all about uh, communication skills what you are talking about how will they judge the honesty and integrity of the person in 10 or 15 minutes without seeing him at work so the uh, board consists of uh, five members with uh, very high amount of experience and they have uh, very good experience in people management and uh, during the course of interview if a person is able to maintain the uh, the argument the expression in a logical manner and does not contradict himself it will ensure that the person has some element of integrity in him Can you define expression in logical manner, which you just said? Mm-hmm. So expression is a in a logical manner. Sir, uh, logical manner would be that if I am saying a particular thing, I am able to substantiate it through some uh, events or through through some data. So that will uh, ensure that whatever I whatever I am putting forward has a s- solid backing or some backing to it. That is what you say. Yes. Through your words. Yes. expression of the face will also uh, yes, sir. things yes sir expression of the face the body language the para language will also uh, in a way affect the way we are communicating will they also assess your alertness yes sir how will they do it sir uh, the way one is perceiving a particular question and is uh, answering to it answer is more important or grasping the question content so both both will uh, have uh, a bearing over the way a person is uh, replying so uh, they want to expect uh, crisp answers or lengthy ones so ideally it should be crisp answers mm-hmm. but uh, uh, not everybody is uh, has a command over language in a way that he is able to produce a crisp answer so the uh, overall gist is more important 
rather than the crispness per se okay suppose if you are tackling a question for which you don't have an answer what would they expect from you so if i don't have an answer then i would say no to it sir how will you say present yourself how will you present yourself by saying no sir uh, i'm sorry sir uh, i currently do not have enough information to comment on this particular subject sir uh, i'm sorry i mean anybody can may not know an answer yes, why sir. should you be sorry for it so because the board is expecting uh, me to have that knowledge uh, because of my background or the way uh, i am so if i am not uh, able to set equal to that uh, expectation then i am uh, asking for uh, the enough time or a, a particular you can say uh, sorry for the negligence that i have had uh, okay at that um, time um, shreyans what is the role of emotions <clears throat> when the interview is conducted and the interview so emotions uh, of interviewee uh, plays a role that if he is able to maintain a good emotional balance uh, throughout the interview it ensures that the person uh, will have some kind of uh, similar characteristic while he is on ground sir suppose you are have got you have done vipassana suppose you were in acting on stage you would be able to hold with the board by showing displaying what is not there then sir uh, if uh, one person is doing acting if he is a fabulous actor then uh, it can have a bearing uh, on the board but i believe the people in the board are much experienced and they will be able to catch uh, hold of uh, if any particular person is acting sir okay coming to experience uh, rahul gandhi has got a 7 8 10 years of experience in politics and he is coming from a family of politicians yes, sir. he has just commented that uh, he would if his party comes <coughs> sorry uh, he would give a status of martyr to the paramilitary forces soldiers who die at the battlefield yes sir defense personnel services when they die they are called martyrs this word martyr has it been approved by the defense services do they do the soldiers who die in the battle field are they called martyrs sir uh, i am not completely aware about the background and what uh, entails uh, with this particular word in uh, the, uh, the the way army works but uh, uh, as per my limited underst understanding there is a, a title of martyr to army and uh, armed forces personnel who die in the battle and they are entitled to some benefits uh, because of it and that is similar thing is not available to central armed police forces personnel sir suppose if a man dies fighting yes sir combating uh, defense service guy soldier and another one dies in a an, in an accident the composition is uh, different sir uh, <coughs> i am not aware about the exact uh, okay tell me one very fast swift answer fast answer or swift answer so uh, fast and swift for me uh, cannot a uh, similar uh, it's got a similar 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 uh, twist to it for me uh, is uh, jainism a religion uh, it is considered a religion now but uh, earlier it used to be called as a way of life sir religion or a sect it's a religion sir and sikhism So it's a religion. It's a religion. And uh, uh, tell me one thing, uh, strange. What is this operation Swan? Operation Swan. Swan. So if I'm remembering correctly, correctly. Uh, uh, no sir i am uh, i am confusing it with something else so uh, i am not sure what operation swan is you talk about uh, pushkar uh, that uh, um, temple at, uh, yes sir near ajmer yes sir 
uh, what is the significance of Sati temple where people do not climb, they come to Pushkar, Bada Pushkar or the other one mm -hmm. and they have a dip and uh, they go away, they, uh, but I would say 10% of them would go all the way up. What is the significance of Sati temple? Uh, sir, Sati temple, uh, if I am correct, it is the Savitri temple uh, which is there yeah. or it is some other temple? It is. It is the Savitri temple. Sir, that temple is considered to be the temple of the wife of uh, uh, Brahmaji and uh, why people, uh, this is the first time I am hearing that people do not go there. So, I am not able to comment why uh, people do not Have go. you ever been there? So, no sir. Have you been to Brahma's uh, uh, Sarovar? Uh, I have been to Pushkar Lake, but I didn't go inside the temple. That's why I am exactly telling you, people don't climb up. No, not in the temple as well. I didn't go to any of the temples. Uh, tourists at the Dargah, Moini, Chishti, yes. they come, they see and then maybe they pray. But locals come there only to pray. They don't come and see as a tourist. What is the difference between the profile of a tourist, what he wants to see and the locals, the profile, mental profile? Okay. So when a, a tourist comes to a particular city, that particular city is totally new for him. Uh, he, is, uh, he or she is trying to gauge what kind of people are there in the city, wh where, where else he, can get, uh, he or she can get the services uh, the basic necessities that he needs or she needs uh, in the city. So uh, the amount of awareness in a tourist will be much higher as compared to a local because local person is well versed with, uh, well versed with the situation in the city. So the amount of awareness, the, uh, the goal that he has is to just pray and come back. He will not worry about the other aspects in the city. While a tourist will look after uh, the whole aspect while uh, going to a new citizen. Friends, uh, when you say they pray, when I told you they pray, do they pray or they ask? So it depends from person to person, sir. What is a prayer? Sir, uh, a prayer uh, generally entails uh, that uh, whatever situation I am facing, I am able to sail it through. Just again asking. For relief? Not, not relief per se, to give me enough uh, strength. Uh, is asking? Not uh, asking per se sir, uh, it will be the resolve that uh, I am having, just keep it strong. Please I am asking to myself, you can say sir. Oh, you are not asking to God? Uh, sir, I am not sure about what other people do, but I can only tell what I do sir. So when you went for Vipassana, uh, what were you doing? Thoughtlessness? So, no, so the idea is not to have thoughtlessness. Preserving energy? Uh, no sir, that is also not the idea. So the principle behind Vipassana is to see things as they are in a special way. Neither attaching to a particular thing nor uh, having a hatred kind of a thing to a particular thing. But have an equanimous uh, uh, attitude towards whatever is in front of you sir. So what uh, after doing this Vipassana, what attracted you to civil services? You are seeing now with a different angle. <laughs> what was it? What is that angle now? Sir, uh, that angle for me in civil services is that it is a particular job in which if I do my work diligently, that will be equivalent to public service. So that the goal uh, which is there is by doing my job diligently, I am able to do public service. So uh, that is a special thing in civil otherwise services. Otherwise you can't do it otherwise. Otherwise, otherwise, you have a platform of civil services. Otherwise, you can do it as well, but uh, you have to make sure that other needs of yours, uh, like the regular needs, are uh, met through your private job or some other job. But in civil services, government takes off cares of your needs, and you have to just focus on your work. You want to be a mama's boy, taking somebody taking care of the needs. No, sir. We have uh, it's limited time. So, if we are able to manage that time, uh, so government is uh, providing all the services because uh, maximum time we can devote to our job, sir. Okay. Hindi, Hindu, 
Hindustan. Who coined this three-worded slogan? So I'm not sure, sir. Delhi Chalo. Sir, Anita Ji Subhash Chandra Bose. Jay Jagat. I'm not sure, sir. Sir Faroshi Ki Tamanna. Uh, I'm not sure. Jay Jawan, Jay Kisan, Jay Vigyan. Sir, uh, Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Who lives if India dies? I'm not sure, sir. Simon Commission go back. Mm. Uh, so there were many people uh, at that time, so I'm not sure uh, who, um, who among them coined it. Uh, you have studied Mayur School. Yes, sir. Is it uh, affiliated to Mayur? Yes, sir. it's part of the Mayo College General Council. It is a co ed day school of uh, that council. What is the motto of your school? So, motto of my school, sir, uh, I'm not able to remember. But I'm sure that you must be knowing the country's motto. Country's motto? Our country's motto. India's motto. National motto. So, Satyamev Chaiti? Absolutely right. What is Dark Sword? Dark Sword. So, I'm not sure. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shreya. You are the team doer. We would like to share our experience. Where is your uh, interview? It's the 13th of March. 13th of March. And how many uh, mock interviews have you attended so far? So, four. This is the fifth? Yes. What did they tell you, the mom? So the idea was that uh, earlier I was um, moving my hands a lot, so to curb that particular thing. Also um, to be able to um, come directly to the point and uh, pick up the gist of the question and uh, answer. Um, Rest was to keep uh, abreast with the whatever happening in the current affairs and in my DAF. Okay. I, I will add something more to it. Uh, you have a very loud voice. You speak very loud. Okay, sir. Put down the volume of your speech. Okay, sir. It is not a Correct, you know, the UPS room is double this size and you are sitting very close to the board. Yes. You speak with the same volume, mm -hmm. you will get irritated. The board will suddenly get irritated, agitated and even angry. So please, uh, practice. Do you normally speak uh, like this with your friends and at your home also? So it's my normal way of Please do something about it. This is not correct. And you are very verbose in your answers. You answer very long. Somebody pointed out that you don't come to the point. This is correct. You have a tendency to speak more than what is really called for. Because you don't listen to the question. Because you don't give a pause to think about the question. Because you don't formulate the answers mentally before reeling it out. So, voice must be controlled, verbosity must be reduced, extensively verbose. You see, don't think that merely speaking good English or too much of English verbosity, they are negative traits of the personality. You get my point. And they are assessing your personality and you are giving them knowledge which they are not interested in. They are asking brief questions, give brief answers. If they ask you to elaborate further, add. But again verbosity has to be avoided and unnecessary words must be avoided. You have been using words which are not really 
uh, used in a serious interview like you could see. So you have to speak like a civil servant, yes. civil servant, season civil, civil servant. You are already a civil servant half, now another half you have to win now. Yes. And this is your first attempt, I will be the happiest person if you make it in the first attempt. And NTV will play a very, very vital role for you. Your forms in the maze must be good. Must be good. I can be comfortable. But your personality problems have to be overcome. Please take it in your stride. I, am being, I, am, I might sound blunt, but this is the fact. So you have to do it. And try to give a pause when, when, when the question is posed to you, you immediately jump to answer. You are so eager to share your knowledge base with us, but you really jump to it. Slow and pause. Give a pause of 5-6 seconds. Think about the question, what exactly was asked. You don't think about it. So that's why you go off the track. Okay. So think about it for 5-6 seconds and then uh, formulate the answers. Yes. Instead of 100 words, put it in 70 words. Yes. This will make your uh, answers more effective. And don't interject. Many a times, you know, when the board was in the process of asking questions or you you raise your voice further and then interject it. That is very, very bad habit. Nobody likes it. Not only you basically, but nobody likes it. Because you are young and this is your first attempt, so you have every reason to feel overconfident. But what we need is confidence. Yes. Maturity. Your answer should be mature. Don't be overconfident. Because that, uh, that is evident from your, the way you speak, the way you communicate, you use, so it becomes evident. A hand movement, of course, I don't know, you, you have controlled it, but you sometimes you come back to it also. So please keep sit like this straight and then. Oh, and then keep your hands. When is your interview? In the phone room or up in the phone? Room? So sit like straight. Take very light diet. Mm -hmm. Take loose. Keep yourself hydrated. Keep, uh, take nutritious food. No. Fruits must be taken. Juice must be taken. Fluid diet. Milk. These things must be taken. Instead of taking meat and rice and all that, mm -hmm. take light food. On that day also takes light, light. Otherwise you will feel drowsy, you know. Mm. Sometimes you may, your turn may come at the end, 7.30, in 2 o'clock. So you will feel start drowsing, this and that, so that you must be. And, uh, From my side, uh, these are the only points which I would like to caution you about. And uh, please do it fast. Don't uh, go to any more mocks. Yes. You will spoil your personality. I am opposed to mock at any moment. I have taken because you have come here. Yes. And it is my duty to point out the shortcomings. Yes. We have a system of, I am not, you take very, very good, don't take more, more for one to one session. You come here, and you go elsewhere, no issue with that. But one to one session is very, very important. That you can, if you want to come here, come here only after getting the recordings. Watch it for three, four, five times. Whether what I said was correct or not. I am not biased, I do not know you. But my duty is to improve your personality so that you come within top 20 or top 40. Mm. That is my duty. 
desire and wish. So please take it. राजस्थान so they are revising the curriculum and the history of it there has something changes i think elsewhere in madhya pradesh they have started renaming the mm-hmm. schemes and all that usko bol sakta hai there was in rajasthan um, government the former government of rajasthan promulgated an ordinance to protect the bureaucrats and the political class are you aware that yes uske bare mein zor kar dijiye condemn it yes because it was a it was an assault on the freedom of speech so no journalist could report anything what is what is going on no transparency means corruption right what is the motive of the government as of that what is the strategy earlier the chief minister of assam was she went uh, she she had gone mad i think and of course the latest news is that she was under pressure from the bureaucrats mm-hmm. is that have you heard like this news thoda uske upar pad lijiye pooch sakte hain zarur iske upar hai stress has covered almost everything the my only suggestion is that uh, you ask a question especially you questions which are open ended mm-hmm. where you can actually give so many things mm-hmm. to give like for example the place you live in and the company for which you work yes. something like this kind of yourself uh, these questions when you have to answer you don't start answering immediately If you have thought about it and you won't miss out on anything, your answer will be so. Both the things will be there, which is actually expected. So just take care of this thing. Otherwise, you have you have very good material, and you should make it. Okay. Just take care. You have to be slightly careful. Well, uh, Shreyans, uh, seeing you, I feel personally feel that you should. Make it because we want a good-looking bureaucrats also, and you have a very good uh, power of language, good command over English language. Pronunciation is good, but your clarity is clouded. But also, uh, forget the general questions, but in the academic also, you know what you've uh, learned, read throughout these you know three or four years there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know the ability to tackle or handle the situation you need some maturity because when you are being pushed i was deliberately asking you all those questions mm-hmm. which may not have relevance there but here since this is a mock interview we want to train you and make you feel and make you also see your shortcomings you were unable to and your face was I mean, you were forced by the question. Your face also had the implicit expressions of no, 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 not no. What should I do now? No, nothing. You have to just smile there. Say I don't know, sir. Whatever it is, because that will improve if you say, you know, sir, I don't know. You know, you understand why I emulated this. And secondly, um, in a logical 
has to be really logical and you won't have so much of time to explain what logic is. Mm -hmm. So that crispness mm -hmm. in your answers. And I've been telling many people that you reply to answer, not to impress. Don't try to impress the board. Okay. They are much of that. And, you, and when you say so, that they are experts in various things, they would see you through. Yes. And they will, nobody likes a person who's trying to impress. Right? So you reply to answer, not to impress. Take this and of course, I would personally feel that you should, you're a good looking man. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Not just good looking, having good knowledge also. Yeah, yeah. So you should be okay. Just take care of small, small things which I can take care of. And don't do your one to one interview with him, he'll be able to guide you more. And that's free of cost. Remember that. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No.